time. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Don't adjust your screens. Yes, he's better looking. Yes, the calves are thicker and way more toned. And yes, his head is filled with flowing hair. Kyle's replacing Jake this week on the end of the week update show. Okay, maybe I'm not replacing Jake. He's off doing soccer with his daughter. So we'll let him have some father time. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to hop in here real quick to help wind down the week and get us ready for some football. Lots of segments in this episode. I've got some end of the week update and news for you that we got to discuss. The lone boner himself, Matt Galloway, is back this week. Woo! We got ourselves a nice tailgate segment, as always, in pristine auction has sent us a box full of a ton, ton of goodies. What could be in there this week? And of course, of course, Jake and Dr. Ethan Turner will be doing a show us a little your teams. But let's start with the weekend news just to wrap up a couple of things here real quick. Dalton Schultz and Dak Prescott here at the end of the week. Both got in full participation. They're both expected to play this week. Nice little boost for this offense, even though, honestly, they've been playing very well. Hopefully, this will help them stretch the field a little bit, and we could see definitely kind of a Michael Gallup bounce back this week, really get him going with Dak Prescott being back and facing the Lions secondary. J.K. Dobbins today, it was announced that he is going to undergo arthroscopic knee surgery. A little bit of a cleanup for him after that knee tweak last week. He's going to be out about four to six weeks. Now, a lot of people run in to grab Kenyon Drake, and I understand, but do not forget, Gus Edwards he could actually return this week. And if he doesn't return this week, he's got until the 26th. If he cannot return by the 26th, he's got to go back to IR. But at this point, John Harbaugh said there is an opportunity for him to return soon. Even though it's not this week, we could be looking at him here in the coming weeks. And if that happens, we are looking at a guy that will probably step in and be the RB1. Elijah Moore will not be playing this week after his little spat this weekend, or excuse me, towards the end of the week here, demanding a trade from the New York Jets because he's unhappy with his targets. Took to social media and was like, I love my teammates or something weird like that. And Robert Salas basically said at this point, nope, it's not fair to ask this guy to play with where he's at current, currently with his, mental, uh, with his mental status, you know, whether it be personally, professionally. Let's give him the week to kind of take a break and see what happens. So Elijah Moore is not going to be in there this week. Does that mean we go to Corey Davis or Garrett Wilson? No, because it's still the Broncos defense, which is very good at limiting them ball catchers. Uh, Kenny Pickett, Pat Fryermuth, both of them are back. Clear the concussion protocol. They'll be starting this week, ready to go. I think that's great news for the Steelers' offense. And then a lot of questions surrounding, obviously, the trade of Christian McCaffrey last night. We still have not heard anything from San Francisco in terms of what his availability could be this week. So if you own Jeff Wilson, more than likely you'll still potentially be able to use him this week. If you own Elijah Mitchell, listen, I'm going to reiterate what I said on the breaking news show last night. You own Jeff Wilson and you own Elijah Mitchell. Unless you own Christian McCaffrey, it makes no sense to own either of those guys. So I'm going to cut them loose for other people. Now for the Carolina Panthers, though, they did make comments today that sounds like Dante Foreman is going to be taking over as the lead back but Chuba Hubbard will then uh, kind of be that pass catching back, that third down role. And he is a guy that I think could quickly kind of take a little bit more away from Foreman. We'll see what happens with him. Probably not starting any of those guys anytime soon, uh, but keep an eye on it because if we do see somebody break out. If Chuba Hubbard does get a ton of targets like Christian McCaffrey was, maybe not as many, obviously, but he's still getting, you know, six, seven targets a game. That could be viable in some fantasy format. So there's your end of the week updates. But Jake had a great box, a great box from Pristine Auction. He was like, dude, I think we've got something pretty cool this week. So let's toss it over to Jake and see what Pristine Auction has sent us. That's right. Hit the like button if you love giveaways, because we are coming with two straight mother... 
bangers of a giveaway here today. Thanks to our friends at Pristine Auction. Once again, if you want to be eligible for any of these giveaways, all you have to do is head over to pristineauction.com. Sign up for an account, a free account, costs you nothing, using the referral code headliners. When you do that, we'll put a $10 credit into your account if you decide to purchase something at some point. But by doing that, by setting up these free accounts, by us sending traffic to their site, they're sending us these banger items for you, and we're giving things away. I am shipping things out left and right, and people are absolutely loving it, but we got two items today that may be two of the highest-end items that we've given away. And I'm doing them both in this show. So you better make sure you stay tuned because one of these items will be given away in Discord. One of these items will be given away on one of our upcoming videos in week eight. So you got to stay tuned. Last week, we did a football and a helmet, right? We did a Zach Ertz helmet and an Alvin Kamara jersey. This week, I think we're going to go jersey helmet again because I got some banger helmets. So I'm going to put this one up here first. This is going to be the helmet that we give away. I don't know if you can see anything. Probably not. You probably can't see it yet. And then a jersey. Let's do, let's just do the helmet first since it's here on my desk right now. So what I have here is a full-sized, mm, this thing is sweet. I'm not even a fan of this team, but I would like to have this piece right here. How about a full-size, oh baby, how about a full-size CD Lamb? Alternate flash blue helmet. Oh, baby. Look at this thing. Look at the shimmering in the lights, even. It's got the shimmer in the helmet. You can see the signature right there. That's CD's signature right there. You can kind of see it with the lighting a little bit. That is sweet. Got the certificate of authenticity from JSA right there as well. This, this helmet is sick right here. Got to make sure you set up that free account at Pristine Auction. For one of the, that thing is sick. I'm just going to leave it sitting right here. It looks good on my desk. It looks good shimmering. But if you thought that was good, how about we give away probably one of the most valuable signatures in all of football? It's really hard to get anything for this guy less than triple digits, right? How about we go with a signed Lamar Jackson jersey right there. I mean, that is sick. You got the LJ8 on the jersey. Certificate of Authenticity. Lamar Jackson signed jersey. It's kind of folded weird here in the... I'll open it. I'll open it so you can see it. There you go. You can see the name there in the back. Bam! Lamar Jackson. Right there. A signed Lamar Jackson jersey. There is nobody else on YouTube giving away items like this every single week. If you appreciate that, do me a favor, hit that like button down below and get that free account signed up. There's links down below in the description. These items are absolutely sick, and I'm looking forward to giving them away just next week. But for now, back to you, Kyle. Woo wait, wait, wait. An autographed CD lamb helmet and a Lamar Jackson jersey? Oh, man. You are not going to want to miss out on either of those things. Those are freaking incredible. Holy cow. But, I mean, it's one of the most popular segments of the season that people have been begging for us to do more of. We just haven't had nearly the time. But this episode does have one. It is the tailgate chef. Let's go ahead and check in on what, you know, what recipe we have for this weekend. My brain is on information overload right now. I do not feel like cooking at all. But we told the people we'd have a tailgate segment. Tater is calling me. That's never. I don't even know how he gets my number. What's up, Tater? You're going to cook for me? Heck yeah, I can come over. 30, 45 minutes? Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. I'll be over there. Boy, 
no idea. Where the hell am I? We are in the middle of nowhere. Tanner. Oh, hey there, Jake. There he is. How's it going on, man? What's going on, man? You standing out here by the grill? You working hard? Yeah, man. I got us some uh, good food cooked up. Um, I don't smell anything. Did you well, cook? No, it's already done. I uh, timed it out just right. Uh, got some nice uh, southern backyard barbecue for us. What? Are we going yeah, to some backyard man. barbecue? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, you have a good day so far? So far, so good. I mean, I am, I am a little hungry. Good. But I'm glad to because I've been working so hard this week. I didn't want to have to go out there and cook myself. Man, when I saw you come around the back of the house, I could tell that was a hungry man. That's man. a hungry man right there, absolutely. So you, what, what are we what are we doing today? What do well, we got? Yeah, so uh Let me see here. I can't wait. Let me get a close up here. I got something special for us. What? These are uh let me get these off. What? Uh this is gonna be delicious. Um I got uh some backyard barbecue. I don't I think it might be like a rib meat. Um, and the chicken, and then mashed taters, and corn. It's corn, and uh, I think that's a brownie there. Um, I, I mean, when you said you had backyard bar, I was. Uh, did you cook microwave meals on a grill? No, these are I. I made these for you. What? Well, this one's mine. This one can be yours though. Look at that one. I mean, that is it supposed to be that color? I've made these before. I mean, they're good. Um, I got to admit, I was I, I was expecting a little bit more. Well, I I don't I don't know if I want. What are these? Is that real meat? I don't know what kind of highfalutin meat you trying to eat, but this is good eating right here. Tater, I I I, I, I just I just I just can't, man. I. I'm am sorry. I, I I can't I can't have that for lunch. Well, I don't see what's wrong. I mean, these are. Good. I mean, I'm sure you. Yeah, you just. Um, uh. Mm, yeah. Mm. Hey. Best of luck. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna do you a favor. <laughs> what's that? I'm, I'm gonna let you have both of them. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. Have, you, Taylor, you, ha, you have yourself a good day, though, my friend. You, 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 you have a good one. I appreciate the, I appreciate the offer. I gotta get the hell out of here. I don't know what the big deal is. This is, this is good eating corn. Mmm, it's good. I don't know what his problem is. Now there's not much weather to talk about other than some. Foggy skies in Foxborough and maybe some rain in Baltimore, but I guess we'll go ahead and review this beer. I, it's been a couple weeks off and I didn't stop buying beer while I wasn't reviewing it, so uh, but thankfully I had one left. This is from the Terrapin Beer Company and it caught my eye because it's called the Pre-Game Pale Ale and that seemed like perfect to go with my backyard barbecue tailgate meal that I guess is ruined now because of Jake, but you know, whatever. Uh, this says every day is game day and I love that. Uh, it says unpack your favorite folding chair and crack open a pre-game pale ale, the perfect partner for all your tailgating activities with its soft mouth feel and hazy appearance. This is elegantly balanced, easy sipper. Will help you root for your beloved team on game day. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is from the Terrapin Beer Company in Athens, Georgia. Uh, it is a pale ale and, uh, let's see, 5.4%. Uh, so let's take a sip of this and see what we think here. Try to wash some of this barbecue sauce out my beard. Now that is, you could drink about 10 or 12 of these pre-gaming and feel just fine about it. There is a, a perfect, they said, soft mouth feel and i wasn't quite sure how to feel about that soft mouth feel is a, a great thing i'm gonna give this i'm gonna give this a 7.9 it's right up there right there at eight for me i i could be tempted to go eight uh depending on how many of these i had had but 
a very solid beer from the Terrapin Beer Company in Athens, Georgia. If you can find one of these, uh, I actually got it in a pack, kind of a mixture of all kinds of beers that they make, and I'll be trying some of those out later on, but uh, definitely worth a, a taste. So try this out. Like I said, not much weather to talk about. No more uh, backyard barbecue left, so... Uh... <sighs> Once Jake saw that frozen dinner, he... No, mm -mm. deuces, baby. Deuces when he saw that. Matt Galloway introducing a new segment last week, Max Friday Flyers. He's back with us this week. Hit the like button for the Lone Boner. Mac, what do you got for us? Headliner Nation, what it do, baby? It's your boy Big Mac, a.k.a. The Lone Boner. I'm back again with the Friday Flyers. Yo, that's five guys. If you got room on your bench, you should stash them away and get ahead of the curb on the waiver wire. And without further ado, let's get busy. All right, guys, the first player I want to talk about is Dearness Johnson from the Cleveland Browns. So, look, we got about two weeks to go before the trade deadline hits, okay? So, it's a lot of teams out there that's looking for running back help. The Rams, Denver. And here's the thing. It's not a lot of backs out there that you can really say that can go in and plug and play and just be a quote-unquote bell cow. Dearness Johnson has proven that he's one of those guys. He did it last year against Denver, and he rushed for like 146 yards when Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb went out. So go on your waiver wire, see if he's out there, scoop him up. If you got room on your bench, just stash him away. You won't be disappointed. All right, guys, the next player I want to talk about is Isaiah Likely from the Baltimore Ravens. So, look, Mark Andrews was out of practice this past week on Wednesday. John Harbaugh said it was a rest day. Could be nothing. Could be something. There was some talk that it was a knee soreness or something like that. I don't know. But the main thing is you want to make sure that you get a piece of this offense, especially at the tight end position. They already like Isaiah Likely. He's a hybrid type of uh, receiver slash tight end. You know, they line him in the slot. They put him at X. Sometimes he plays the Y. He's all over the field. He's already getting about four targets a game right now. So if anything was ever happened to Mark Andrews, he would get bombarded with targets. You know, when he came out of Coastal Carolina, he was highly talented. You know, it was just a small school, but a lot of people at the pro day, they really loved his skill set and his hands. And him and uh, Lamar Jackson seemed to have a great rapport early in the offseason. So go out, look and see if you can find Isaiah Likely, put him on your bench and watch the magic happen. All right, next guy up I want to talk about is Calvin Austin III from the Pittsburgh Steelers, wide receiver. So, look, he's just now coming back on IR. They have until October 26th, uh, which is next week, to see if they're going to put him on the 53-man roster. Without a doubt, they're going to do it. They really love this guy. And when I say speed, I'm not saying he's Tyreekish, if that's even a word. I made it up. But listen, the dude was clocked at 4-3 at the pro day, or the combine, I should say. But there is film out there and still shots, and they said something happened with the clock, but it's stuff out there, go look it up, or we'll post it, that it showed he was actually at a 4.1. Crazy fast. But here's the thing. This is what you got to look at within this Pittsburgh still offense now. Now you got Claypool. Now you got Deontay Johnson. Fair move when he gets back. And you got George Pickens playing the X. When you put Calvin Johnson in that slot, it's going to cause the defense to shift, and that safety is going to have to pay close attention to him, it, whether it's on a go route, um, whether he runs a hitch. It doesn't matter. With that type of lateral speed, the defense is going to have to adjust. Now you got one-on-one -on -one action with guys like Claypool, Deontay Johnson. It's going to be crazy. That offense is going to open up tremendously. And listen, you want a piece of that. Get him on your roster ASAP. Next player up I want to talk about is Wandale Robinson from the New York Giants. Yo, this player is what I call an astronaut. These are players that I dub astronauts because they get out in space, right? That's where they're most elusive, they're most dangerous. It's when you can get them out in open field, open space between the hashes. And Wandale is one of those guys. And Mike Kafka is very good at that because he used to do that with Tyreek Hill, Nicole Harmon, those guys in Kansas City. And he's trying to bring that to the Giants, but Kenny can't get right Galladay and Kadarius Tony, they can't stay healthy. So now Wandale is back and they're trying to slowly incorporate that into the offense. We saw it this past Sunday. Wandale led the team in targets. 
You know, he, he's getting out of space and he scored a touchdown. So he's starting to trend upward. So if he's out there on your waiver wire, you want to go get him. Daniel Jones, specifically, he loves to target the slot area. So do I. Hey now. But listen, but they like to move him all over. Sometimes Wandell will play on outside as well. You know, he's not a huge wide receiver, but he can, you know, beat the bump and run and or press coverage. And he can get out in space and make something happen. So if you got him out in your waiver wire, go pick him up. All right, last but not least, and I can't even believe I'm doubling up on Giants right now, but I want to talk about Matt Breida, simply because Saquon Barkley has been getting nicked up here lately, especially he didn't hurt his shoulder twice now. And look, we know his injury or his history of injuries. I don't want to call him injury prone, but it is what it is. So Matt Breida, you know, he's a guy that can come in and be serviceable. I'm not going to say he's going to give you Saquon Barkley type numbers. But within that offense and how they like to get guys out in space, especially their running backs, Matt Breed is a great catcher out of the backfield. Uh, we saw what he did back in San Francisco a few years ago. Matt Breed is very serviceable. So if he's out there on your waiver wires, he's not highly owned right now. Go ahead and scoop him up, stash him away, just see what happens. So look, guys, appreciate the time once again. Yo, I'll be back on next Friday, baby. We're going to do this thing. Good luck to everybody this weekend. Go get those guys. Peace. Max always spitting that fires. Max, I mean, his words are magic. How can you not be focused on what this man is saying? All right. All right. For those of you that have been submitting your teams all week long, here we go. Jake and Dr. Ethan, what do you got for show us your teams? All right. Here we go. Week seven time. First, show us your teams, Ethan. Can you believe that we're already in the seventh week of show us your teams? It actually technically it's the eighth because I think we did a preseason one, right? So I mean, this is this is a lot of teams we've looked at here over the last uh, few weeks. So many teams. We've been looking at all them teams. I mean, if you're willing to show us, we're willing to look, right? I mean, that's yep. just like our mo right now. Hey, all right, but hey, nobody gets in trouble for looking. That's right. I'm not touching any of these teams, so we're good. All right, let's go ahead and start it off here, Ethan. I'm going to pull up the first one here, and this one is from Aiden is Me, and maybe it looks like the logo is a little bit different. That's because it's one of our members, and they Ooh. submitted it on Discord to us, so I had Ooh. to make sure to show him some love here at the start of the show. I love it. He's got Team Auto Draft, which is currently one in five. Yikes. Not uh, not a great start. The Bengals logo looks hand drawn and looks borderline elite. If I do say so it myself, it's really solid. Notas does that does that mean notes in Spanish? Notas, Notas. yeah, I would probably. All right. Well, overall, I like the colors. It caught my attention. Yeah, the penmanship is wonderful. Very easy to read. But let's take a look at this team because. With the Bengals logo on top, you got to expect to see some Bengals on the roster. And right off the top. Some. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. There, there may be a few. We got Joe Burr right here at the top, followed by Alvin Kamara, Josh Jacobs, then two more Bengals in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, then Deontay Johnson. He's flexing Ramondre Steve. Now, who the heck is Steve? Ramondre Steve is like, the like the third cousin twice removed of Ramondre Stevenson. Like, ah, okay. He hasn't quite gotten that far yet. He hasn't earned the ensign yet of his name, apparently. Yeah. Got the Bengals defense, Graham Gano. And on his bench, he's got Miles Sanders and Miles Sanders, James Robinsons. Robinson Sons. <laughs> James Robinsons. There's plural. There's more than one of them. Devin Duvernay, Kenneth Walker. Also has Tyler Boyd, so he went he went the full gamut yeah. uh, of Cincinnati Bengals receivers. No mixing, but pretty much the entire team besides that. If he had a tight end, it's probably Hayden Hurst, if I had to guess. Yeah, probably. Uh, also has Alec Pierce and then Keenan Allen on his IR. So overall, honestly, if you just look at the names, the team is pretty freaking stacked. Yeah. I, I don't know if I love all the love on one team. I mean, obviously, individually, we like T. Higgins. We like Jamar Chase. Do I want to start them both each week? I don't I don't think I do. 
But with Keenan Allen coming back at some point, I have to think that he goes into the wide receiver three spot, at least over Deontay Johnson. But this team is stacked. Kamara, Jacobs, Sanders, and Kenneth Walker. I'll throw James Robinson's in there at the end, but tons of tons of depth at running back. Yeah, I think the running back, honestly, he's got pretty good depth at wide receiver, too. I mean, you got Keenan Allen coming back. Yep. You got Alec Pierce, Duvenay's been okay with Bateman out. I mean, running back, obviously, you're pretty set. I'm, and this is, you, you're putting a lot on one offense. And so anytime the Bengals offense struggles, the team is going to struggle. I don't love the team building, yeah. but I do think he has a lot of studs on this team. The record does not indicate what the talent level of this team is. I think he drafted okay. Um, maybe a little Bengals heavy. I would have diversified, but you got to spread the risk yeah. out across multiple teams. Yeah. Um, and that's just my personal philosophy. I know some people really like the stack. I don't really know about the quad stack. Uh, it's just not really something that I do personally. So not quad stacking. No, I stop at triple stacks. Triple stacks, even, and I don't want two wide receivers if I'm stacking no. personally. Um, no. You know, quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback, wide receiver, running back. I'm okay with those. Um, not a huge one and two wide receiver because you just they're not going to both catch pat touchdowns at the same time. Yep. So you're limiting your upside. Uh, overall, I can see how the team's one and five. The Bengals have struggled a little bit offensively. But they're getting better. They're, they're, they're looking b- looking good. Last week was a good week. It had to have uh, been his win last week. What did you say? It had to have been last week that oh, he yeah. got his one win. Yeah, because Jacobs played well too, and so did Kamara. Not so, last week because Jacobs was on a bye. Oh, sorry. But Jacobs has been playing well, but Kamara yes. did play well last week, and he has Kenneth Walker, so I'm yep. assuming – Walker was in there at that uh, RB2 spot. Yeah. It's okay. Tough start to the year. I'm still probably holding Pat, maybe trading a running back for another wide receiver. Since you do start three of them every single week, four if the flex can, I'm assuming, be a wide receiver as well. Um, But you got Keenan Allen coming back. You're trying to squeeze into that last playoff spot. Honestly, if it's me, I think I'm taking T. Higgins and either Miles Sanders or James Robinson's and I'm trying to package them together to get a, a better option there at my wide receiver two or three yeah. once Keenan comes back. That's what I'm going to do personally. I'll keep Jamar Chase. That'll give you Jamar Chase, Keenan Allen, and somebody you can pick up in a trade, a high-end guy for those two pieces right there. Yeah, I agree. Grade-wise, I'm going to go C+. Plus. It's just not how I like to build teams. Way too much risk uh, on the, the Bengals' offense. I know they were supposed to be superstars, but it's just not an offense that I really like to – it's just not my personal strategy, how I like to build teams. Uh, and we can see, you know, kind of worst-case scenario. They have three bad games, and you start out one and five. Yep. I mean – Exactly. It's Overall, idea. it's too much Cincinnati. I still think I'm going to go with a B minus only because I still think that this team has enough depth to make one trade and get, you know, exponentially better by yeah. making just one trade has the pieces to do it. All right, let's go on to the next one here. This one is Bass ETN. Hardly thinks this is somewhat inappropriate. But mm. then again, I don't know. Or is he just eating bass? And he's got and a picture could of just a, be a fish. Reference. It could just be eating a it could just be it could just be was that Pac-Man eating a fish. Yeah. He's just I, I don't think Pac-Man eats fish, but pretty sure they're ghosts. But hey, uh it's cool. We got a little cursive in here. We got we got, we got one damn word in cursive. We got bubble letters. We do. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the title. The yeah. Tops bubble yeah. letters. Yeah. Uh we do have some some pencil. You know, he's not afraid to admit he's made some mistakes. No, he's not afraid. He's he's used that eraser on that bad boy. Yeah. And uh, I like that he did attempt to draw a bench at the bottom. So. It is the shortest bench I've ever seen. Uh, it's like a one person bench. That's like a timeout chair. Well, it's not even. very wide. You mean wide? Yeah. Like you can only wide. fit one butt on that bench. But I feel like it's one of those benches that like your head would hit the back because it's very tall. It's very tall. Like you it looks like a comfy it, bench. Like, there's no back support on this bench. Most benches don't have back support anyway, but this thing is like two arms away from being a rocking chair, Ethan. Uh, yeah, I could see that a little bit. And I'm not sure, you know, hey, shout I out like to Ben. I also struggle to draw the legs on tables and they're hard and they're benches. Hard. Legs are tough. So, you know, I see what you were going for there, but it's not really looking that great. All right. So we got team Bass Eaton which means he's got to have Tyler Bass and Travis Etienne. 
I see Tyler Bass is his kicker. I see ETN's his second flex. Yes, ETN is his second flex down there. We got a tight end premium, full PPR, okay. 12 okay. team league. So Derek okay. Carr coming off the bye week. Yep. Aaron Jones and Ramondre yep. Stevenson. Not Ramondre Steve, different than the last guy. Yeah, totally different dude. Totally different dude. Cortland Sutton, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd, Travis Kelsey. So that's good. Mm -hmm. And a tight end premium. Jake, is it Sutton or is it Sutlan? Or is it Suhan? I I think it may be Cortland Suhan. 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 That could be an H. That could be a capital H in there. Uh, He also has Hawkinson coming off a bye with ETM, the Bengals and Bass. Now, on the bench... I'm seeing Jimmy G and Tevin Coleman. I think that's Rahoim Mostert. Yeah, Rahoim. Rahoim Mostert and Naheem Hines. Yep. And then Jarvis Landry and Hunter Renfro. So on the surface, I'm a little worried about the wide receiver position because we got Sutton Samuel Boyd and then Landry and Renfro. Renfro hasn't done anything. Landry has been injured. Boyd is playing third fiddle. Curtis Samuel was held almost scoreless last week. And then Cortland Sutton's dealing with all the Russell Wilson problems. So that's where I'm looking right now as being somewhat uh, somewhat worried on the surface. Yeah, but see, I'm not worried. Oh, well, that's good. As much because he's got Travis Kelsey. That's true. And I don't and now see TJ Hawkins teams with Travis Kelsey in tight end premium leagues not at least making the playoffs. So uh, I do agree is a little weak at wide receiver. Running backs are okay. Um, tight end is a little strong. Probably took TJ Hawkinson when after he took Kelsey, and that's why his wide receiver is Probably. a little bit weaker. Um, yep. If if it's me, I'm maybe trying to shore up the wide receiver ranks a little bit. I don't know exactly which piece I'm moving. Probably Stevenson in this case. Mm. Uh, the only reason I say that I, is I do expect Damian Harris to be back uh, in the next three or four weeks. So I worry about what you're going to do when that happens. Are, is Stevenson still going to be a, a smash start for you every single week? I don't know. You're probably going to be able to peak his value here um, in the next week or two. Could make it even get a couple wide receivers if somebody's really hurting at running back um, to sure up this wide receiver two and three. I'm almost open to trading anyone on this team, not named Travis Kelsey. And that's really just about it. Yeah. I mean, everybody I can, else I, I look at is I would be willing to pair up one or two of these guys to get some better overall pieces for the pass catchers. I feel like outside of Kelsey, everybody's expendable for the most part. Obviously I like Aaron Jones. I like Travis ETN. I mean, I like, I love Ramondre Stevenson. I have a, I have an unsafe obsession with Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson. Um, I really does like that get, kid. Does he get you a full chub, Jake? No, only only Nick Chubb can make me go full okub. Okay. But Ramondre so half Chubb. He's damn close. Okay. Dang. So I mean, I, I love what uh what he's putting together there in New England. But like you said, when Damian Harris comes back, the ceiling's just gonna drop down. But yeah, I'm looking overall here at Bass Eaton season, and I'm looking to try to pair up a couple of these guys. Now the question's gonna be, well, who should I who should I pair up? Who should I go after? We really don't know. What I'm trying to do right now is trying to find a team in this league that has an excess wide receiver on their bench that they're not really using that could help your team. And then yeah. just trying to go after them and say, hey, what, what would it take to get so-and-so and, and, and see what would work out? Yeah, and I would maybe target a guy like a Keenan Allen who's yes. been hurt all year that yes. somebody's frustrated with. Um, we know he's coming back at some point. Yep. Uh, probably in the next week or two. So. Yep. I'm probably targeting that guy and just saying, hey, you know, look and see what his team looks like. But yep. if I can throw together a couple pieces to maybe turn that into, and as always, at this point in the year, we're targeting teams that have not been winning. Yep. Because they're trying to make a move. They're trying to either get depth or maybe he's terrible at running back. He might, that person, he or she may be willing to give you two decent pieces mm-hmm. or pretty high end wide receiver pieces. For a guy like Travis Etienne, just because they want to shake something up, they want to make a move to feel like they're trying to win still. Yep, I, I agree. What's what's your grade here? I'm going to go with a C. There's some work to do. I think that the team has some good pieces, but uh, a lot of that has to do with Travis Kelsey. Also, 
Uh, I do like the effort with the pencil and the actually I'll go C plus because I like the effort with the uh, the cursive season as well. OK, I, I think I would have gone B minus, but there's a few erase marks that just didn't quite get all the way through. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, so I'm going to I'm going to sit right there at a, a solid C plus. OK, we'll solid C plus. All right, C+ let's go on to the next one here. This is the backwards hats. And this is from Wendy's hats. McNuggets, who's been a long time follower of this channel. Been Give around. Shout out McNugs. Yeah, shout out Wendy's McNugs out there. Uh, got Headliner Nation is a full PPR, fourth out of twelfth or fourth of twelve. So I'm guessing fourth pick was in the draft. There's a lot going on here, though. We have the starters as Jalen Hurts, Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker, Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen, who was originally Kenneth Allen. It looks like. Yeah, LOL. Yeah, put the LOL in there. Uh, George Kittle, Curtis Samuel, Hyunghui Ku, Las Vegas as his bench as his defense, and then on the bench, Dak Prescott, Jeff Wilson, Damian Harris, Raheem, not quite a must start, Mostert, Tony Pollard, Gus Edwards, Jerry Judy, George Pickens, Romeo Dues, and Rondell Moore. But most importantly, he's telling everybody at the bottom of the page, hit the like button. Yeah, like, please do. Yeah, I mean, take a second. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. And it really helps us out. Hit the like button. Mm-hmm. Um, so we need to make some moves here because Jalen Hurts, this dude is on a bye this week. He ain't starting. So we need to we need to address that. Stephon Diggs is his wide receiver one. He's on a bye this week. That's a problem. Keenan Allen is currently his wide receiver two, not even for sure playing yet. That's a problem. So luckily on his bench, he has Dak Prescott, which sounds like he's coming back this week. Yep. So for me, Dak Prescott going right into the quarterback spot. Um, what do we have to replace Stefan Diggs? Mm. Um, I guess Jerry Judy. Judy. Yeah, I'm got, probably saying Jerry Judy at yeah. this point because you may have to replace Keenan Allen as well. And if you do, now all of a sudden you're looking probably – you're probably having to gamble with like a Romeo Dobbs. I think if you have to go somewhere else, maybe if you really want to be spicy with it, you go Rondell Moore if you don't have Keenan Allen this week. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, I don't love it, but I don't mind it. I yeah. mean, if you re- you could also put Curtis Samuel as your wide receiver too. That would open up your flex where you could put Tony Pollard, who has a great matchup this week against Detroit. I don't hate that either. Um, that is another option as well. Overall, though, tough week. Um, for you know, bye weeks at least for Jalen Hurts, Stephon Diggs, and the injuries to Keenan Allen. But a, a lot of rounds in which they were taken, where they were you know picked up from, whether it was waivers, streaming options. At one point, he traded DeAndre Hopkins, which looks like he traded D Hop for Jalen Hurts at some point. Yeah. What do you think about this team overall, Ethan? I think the team is solid. Definitely could compete for a championship. I like Diggs, I like Hurts. I mean, the top end is really high end. The bench, I like that he's working the waiver wire, trying to find those mm-hmm. diamonds in the rough uh, on the waiver wire. That's going to be key, especially when you're coming through to bye weeks. Bye weeks are going to hurt some teams more than others. This team is one that I feel like after this week is going to be, be okay yep. going forward uh, from bye week perspective. Uh, and that's something that maybe you guys should be paying a little bit more attention to now that we're into the bye weeks and we're getting into the thick bye weeks where – four, five, six teams might be on by week to week. Um, take a look ahead and see, hey, do I have three or four guys that are all on by at the same time? Do I need to be working the waiver wire a few weeks early just to anticipate that? Maybe it's just getting a good matchup at quarterback and defense. Uh, maybe it's getting a good matchup uh, for a wide receiver three that you can pick up off waivers. Just a little bit of strategy uh, right now as we kind of fit through these bye weeks but really like the team i'm gonna go with a a b plus Uh, that's kind of where i was thinking too right in that b plus area it's rough because when you look at it you're looking at it this week and this week it just looks a little bit rough but like you said once you get past this week overall especially if you get keenan allen back as well you're going to start looking pretty good overall for an entire roster i'll agree with you there all right next one this one we have taylor swift was right about kanye (laughs) from kid charmander so that was the team name. We got a picture of, of Taylor and, and Kanye uh, sitting there. Maybe is this a play on words? Is this a Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift pun? He's making, I I think that's what Kid Charmander is going for here. All right, well, let's look at the team. Then we got the quarterback of Joe Burrow, popular amongst the people right now. Yeah. And then there we go. The two running backs, Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift. 
Brutal so, injury luck. Yeah, brutal injury luck as far as that's concerned for sure. But then you got Higgins, Godwin, Njoku, Brees Hall, the Bucks, and Gano. On the bench, you have Kenneth Walker. Love that. Okay. Um, Deontay Johnson, Curtis Samuel, TJ Hawkinson, Brian Robinson Jr., James Conner, the Eagles defense, and Dak Prescott, which is currently in your IR spot. So you'll be able to bring Dak Prescott back this week. I, you don't need them because you got Joe Burrow. So right off the bat, we have a team that's three and three. And the one thing that I can see, Ethan, and I'll let you comment on this because I don't know if you feel the same way about this as I do. I have a hard time rostering an extra defense and an extra quarterback that I don't really need. And with the Bucks defense, do I want to hold the Bucks and the Eagles defense? I know the Eagles defense has been playing great lately and they're on a bye this week, but do we want to roster both of them? I it depends on what your waiver wire looks like for me. Um I mean, the two quarterbacks, okay, Prescott's on IR, so is he really yeah. taking up a bench spot yet? No. I probably wouldn't have him doing that, but I also can understand, hey, don't, you know, hold on to him so somebody can't pick him up. Mm-hmm. Um, at least use him as a trade tool later. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd maybe use him as a piece to possibly pair with a guy. Um, I'm trying to think of even who I would pair. And maybe with. that's why he can't make any moves right now because he could have an ineligible player at his IR and it won't mm-hmm. let him make any switches until he moves him. Well, and there's a lot of players hurt on this team right now. Uh, you got you got Swift and Taylor, obviously, but Higgins has been banged up. Uh, Godwin's been banged up this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Curtis Samuel, you know, down week last week. Um, James Conner, that was the other one I was yep. looking for. I kept reading the thing and couldn't find it. <laughs> James Conner's been hurt, yeah. but he's got Walker. He's got Robinson. So he's got good depth at running back. Um, and I think Brees this team is place. better than three and three, honestly. I feel like it's, it's, it, I feel like this is a team that could go on a little bit of a run. You get Swift back, you get Taylor back in the next two weeks. And then you start winning, you know, uh, roll off three, four wins in a row. I think it's a good enough team, honestly. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of talent at running back. I'd maybe be looking for a second wide receiver or a wide receiver upgrade if I can. Um, trying to get into that top tier of wide receiver ones. You've got enough running back talent on this team that you can afford to trade or look to trade a guy like uh, Kenneth Walker or a guy mm-hmm. like, um, I would even be, now, this might sound crazy, Don't Jake. Don't you dare say Brees Hall. I would even be willing to trade DeAndre Swift. Oh, okay. I, I think that Swift has some serious concerns with soft tissue injuries. It's probably something I will do a video on this offseason because it's we're now up to three years in a row now that he has dealt with soft tissue injuries, and it's something he had, had in college too. Uh, so I'd like to dig into that a little bit more. So I wouldn't be opposed to – I don't I'm Swift's not coming back. I'm – Pairing Swift with uh, maybe even Higgins and trying to upgrade to an elite wide receiver. Yeah, I don't hate that. I would, I totally agree. I would rather trade DeAndre Swift than Brees Hall right now. Oh, yeah, 100%. absolutely. Brees 100%. Hall's healthy and yep. he's being used outrageously. So, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. I do like the pieces. I do like how there's depth enough to where you can make a move. But like you said, having Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift be injured here and a slow start. That's why this team is three and three. It would not surprise me if we check back in with this team in like the next five or six weeks and they don't have seven or eight wins. Yeah. You know I mean, like that's kind of where I see this team going. Overall, love the team. I'm going to give this team because there's a move to be made and you have the pieces to do it. I'm going to give this team a, a, a low end A minus. See, I'm going to go B plus here because uh, there's some strategery here, a little heavy on the running backs. A little light at, at wide receiver. Some of that's Deontay Johnson just being a total dud at wide receiver too. Right. Um, but but overall, I think the team's really good. I'm gonna go B plus. Make a make a move. Go attack those top wide receivers and see if you can't pair Swift up uh, with you know one of these guys either on the bench or um, you know even one of your starters uh, and see if you can't make a huge upgrade at wide receiver. Perfect. All right. Here we go. Last one, Ethan, from Joe Hamilton. We got Ham Town, Slam Town. It's a full PPR <laughs> 10 team. Slam Town. And this dude, I don't know if he was chewing on this envelope that he wrote on 
if he was just angry, he looks like he was angry at this envelope at one. Looks like Maybe. he just got a bill. And yeah, it's was like a like, bill. You know what? Yeah, he's like, I'm submitting my team. I'm trying to Dang write, try to write my damn team, and you want my money. So he's currently in fifth place. Another three and three team. But here's here's what he's got in his roster: Kyler Murray, Cortland Sutton, Amari Cooper, and Mike Evans. Okay. At running back, Joe Mixon and Derrick Henry. Okay. Zach Ertz at tight end. Ramondre Stevenson, not Ramondre Steve, not the first guy of the show. Harrison Butker and Denver. And then on his bench, Michael Carter, Tyler Algier, Kyle Pitts, Bobby Trees, Geno Smith. And on IR currently is Tua, who is going to be coming off of IR. So I don't think that you'll need all three quarterbacks. No. Personally, I probably... I probably keep Tua over Geno if you want to. We'll see how he plays yeah. this week and however you want to do it, and then just keep one of them, if any. Um, the overall team, though, I don't mind it. I mean, Mike Evans kind of underperformed here as of late, but Amari Cooper has been seeing ten plus targets a week. Cortland Sutton a little bit of a downer, and not really an option on the bench outside of Bobby Trees, who's been somewhat of a disappointment as well. But yeah. technically, you can look at it and say that Cortland Sutton is his wide receiver three. I, I I overall don't hate that whatsoever, especially pairing him with Mixon and Henry. No, starters are solid. Uh, I'm assuming he's been streaming kicker. Uh, Butker's probably. been hurt pretty much the whole year, so he probably just uh, picked him up last week. Yeah, I mean he may have just picked him up. Um, mm-hmm. Overall, I think the team the the bulk of the team is really really good. I would keep working the waiver wire a little bit on the bench. Um, I think you can do better than Michael Carter and Tyler Algier. Um, even Bobby Trees. I, I'm going to kind of wait and see what happens with Bobby Trees. He's remember Bobby Trees is coming off an injury, mm-hmm. a major injury last year. It's going to take him a little bit to, to get ramped up. And Traylon Burks is hurt, so yep. I'm still giving him a couple weeks to see maybe if he's somebody. He's one that if he pops, he's going to be a waiver target. So I'm probably holding on to him to see if he pops. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with Tyler Algier, Michael Carter. He's just not doing it for me. So I'm probably getting rid of him. I might even consider dropping both quarterbacks and picking up more, uh, you know, in a one quarterback mm-hmm. league. What are you doing with three quarterbacks? I mean, yeah. you don't, you don't need two. Um, you don't need two. You definitely don't need three. At least two has yeah. been on his IR for a couple of weeks, but yeah, I'm not holding on to all those guys. Do you feel like the font for Ramondre Stevenson is something you would see in a horror movie. Like, I feel like it's he was angry. aggressive. It was, it's aggressive. This, all of this, all of the starters have this like really like slanty, like aggressive. Uh, it's probably because he just read the bill and like, that's where he started. He off. Definitely he, he, did. And it's like, really, you can tell he was really pushing the pin in hard. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you okay, man? Like bills good. Like hopefully it wasn't a medical bill. You know, that us doctors like to spend super huge bills that's just how we do yeah probably uh maybe that's what it was he read the bill was pissed off started with the starters it was you know portrayed through his handwriting and then as it went on he started to calm down a little bit but what do you think overall of hamtown slam town <laughs> the, the name made me laugh so i'm gonna go with the i'm gonna go with the b there's more work to do on the bench but i think the starters are good yep i agree b b minus verge right there is there uh, a reference tried, huh is there a reference with ham slam ham town slam town like is that something we should get it might be but it wouldn't be the first time that we just didn't get it we very rarely get all the references and team names people are always hitting us up in the comments feel like, free dude, to hit us in the comments yeah is this a reference that we are just either too dumb or too old to understand should i google it real quick no, that's too much work. Let them know. And let us know in the comments uh, if we are Google missing it. something on Hamtown Slam Town. Yeah, let us know what that means down below in the comment section. But that's going to do it here for week seven. Show us your teams. Thank you so much for the submissions. Like I said, if you're interested in getting your team submitted so we can critique everything about it, make sure you follow us on Twitter. You can you know, put it on that, that tweet. I believe it's every Tuesday night-ish when I put it out. Ish. Sometimes Ethan has to remind me, but I've been pretty good lately. Occasionally. But as you can see... Members are going to start submitting them in Discord as well. So that is another option if you don't have a Twitter. I know a lot of people tell us they don't have Twitters, Ethan, which is understandable. Twitter is somewhat full of nonsense. But yeah, for this purpose only, Twitter is worth it. That's right. That's right. Just to, just get one to show us your team so we can have a lot of fun here. Rest of the season, thanks so much for submitting them for, for me in the doc right now for week seven. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, our end of the week show. 
is all done, ready to move on. We've got our Saturday live show. Do not forget the time has changed this week. We're gonna be live at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We've got some things going on on Friday. Jake's gotta get up super early. I've gotta be up early Sunday morning as well for a couple of different things. So we are going to move that up in the day to make sure that we don't burn ourselves out too much this week. So appreciate you all hitting the like button on this video. Leave a comment down below. And if you're new here to the Fancy Headliners, you have got to subscribe and become a part of Headliner Nation today. I'm going to get out of here. All of you stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. <laughs>